Mr. Moderator. We just say moderator. All right, good afternoon, everyone. We are now being joined by student athletes from LIU Brooklyn, Joel Hernandez, Julian Batts, Jay Sean Augusto, and Raekwon Clark. Uh, before we start, just a couple of notes. Uh, be sure to silence your cell phones and other mobile devices. There's no flash photography or video recording, but you can see the distribution sites straight across the hall from the back of the room. Uh, when you're asking a question, we ask that you uh, raise your hand. We'll bring the mic around to you. Wait for the mic, and then please address your uh, question to a specific student athlete and just identify your name or yourself by name and affiliation. Uh, and then uh, you can also find transcripts of these press conferences at ncaa.com slash transcripts. We'll open the floor for questions. Yeah, Jabo. Any of you can answer this. Uh, what was your reaction to find out you're going to be playing in the first four? Uh, Joel, can you answer that? Also surprised and happy at the same time, you know, a lot of mixed emotions. We work hard for this, so, you know, proud of our guys for giving everything they got to get to this point. Let's just have you guys go down the line and answer it then. Yeah, from left to right. We're just happy, man. We got a chance to come play in the NCAA tournament. That's all really meant to me. I mean, first four, we got to play in the field at 64. It doesn't matter. We're in. I mean, it was a great feeling. I mean, being able to, being able to play in the March Madness, playing in the, the four. I mean, now now all we got to do is get a dub. Uh, yeah, just like them guys said, it was just an amazing feeling to be able to play uh, in a tournament. And now we're here, we just want to get um, some wins. Back right. This is Nick Irving, University of Dayton. What would it mean for your school to win an NCAA tournament game? Uh, it would mean everything. You know, I don't think there has been a time where um, our school has won a game in the NCAA tournament. So, you know, it would be great to do that for our school and represent our school in a good way. Yeah, I agree. Um, we just put LIU Brooklyn back on the map. That's, a, that's our biggest goal and that's our plan, and hopefully we can achieve it. Jay Sean? Uh, I, I agree with both of them. I mean, it would be history. We make history, you know, because like Joel said, I don't think we won a game in the uh, NCAA. So, I mean, if we do that, you know, our, our, our school is going to be on the map. Rick one. Um, it would be great to win, but we just don't want to get one win. We want to keep winning. Um, it's just not about just one win. We want to keep winning. So, it will be good to get one win, but we want to keep winning. Dave. What has Coach Kellogg brought to this program in his first season? And has he talked at all about his experiences coaching at this arena? He was here a lot with uh, UMass. Joel? Um, he's, he's brought a lot of um, energy to us. I feel like we really feed off that, especially in practice and in games. It helps us a lot, you know, get to get us going and stuff like that. You know, I feel like he's done a great job being a first-year coach. You know, uh, we got really comfortable with him quickly. And I feel like, you know, that helped us out to our favor. Yeah, Julian? I, I agree. He, uh, he brought a lot of energy. That's his main thing. He brings energy, but he also lets us have fun. He doesn't really try to kill us with anything. So I think that's a that's a big part. And uh, I mean, he's he's talked about his his times coaching at NCAA tournament, not so much at Dayton, but he's talked to us about a couple of uh, games. Along with both of what they said, I mean, he brought a lot of energy and he brought a professional look. He lets us do whatever we really want to do. Um, and I mean. With the other coach, you know, we was kind of limited just a little bit. But with him, you know, we get to do whatever we really want to do. And, I mean, he coached at all levels. He coached all the big names. So, I mean, you can't get no better. Rick one? Um, yeah, like he let us play free uh, on the offensive end. Um, he don't question no shot, really. So, it's easy to play for him. Um, just got to play hard on defense. Um, he talked about being in the Final Four or losing. Uh, so he just – he um, basically just said that we got um, – basically um, on the free throw blockouts, he don't want to lose on the free throw blockouts because that happened to him before. So he talks about that a lot. Back right. This is for all the players. 
What experience do you think helped you the most this year in getting to this point? Uh, Raekwon, can you start? Um, I would say, uh, hello? Uh, um, I would probably say, uh, like us facing our adversity in the beginning of the season, we didn't kind of figure it out. And we ended up figuring it out late in the season. That helped us a lot. We came together as a family. And now, I don't think, I don't, I don't think really we could be stopped. Like, that's how I feel. Jay Sean? I think, I think it was the beginning of the season. You know, we, we all had, we had new pieces to the team. So we all had to figure each other out. And there was some of us that played together. And then there was some of us that got bigger roles. So, I mean, I think it was the beginning of the season. We had to really figure it out. And then we picked it up towards the end of the season. Which you'd rather pick it up at the end than the beginning, you know what I'm saying? So, Julian, uh, I'd agree. I think we came together mostly after we uh, we had a loss at St. Francis PA, and we had a long talk in the locker room. And I think after that, we all just gelled and meshed together and became like a true family that we always talked about. So I think that was our biggest uh, turning point. Joel, yeah, I feel like um, we had a lot of we had a lot of different games. You know, we had games where we won by a lot, we lost by a lot. It was a, um, a battle, you know, came down to the wire. So I feel like all those games, we, we took something from each of those games and, you know, we learned from it. And now, you know, I feel like we're, we're playing better than ever now. Any further questions for our student athletes? Guys, thank you. Good luck tomorrow night. Uh, next, we are scheduled to be joined by the head coach of the LIU Brooklyn Blackbirds at 440. We joined at 440 by Derek Kellogg.
All right, we're now being joined by the head coach of LIU Brooklyn, Derek Kellogg. Hey, Derek. Uh, Derek, if you'd like, you can make an opening statement, and then we'll uh, open the floor for questions. Well, first of all, I would like to thank the, uh, the people that are in charge in the Dayton area because um, the uh, reception we got coming into the hotel and the way everybody's really made us feel like this is home is, um, I think, a testament to the uh, – University and also the city of Dayton in the area of how committed they are to uh, basketball. So we're excited to be here. It's been a great experience to this point, and we're hoping to uh, play well tomorrow night in, a, uh, in an arena that I'm very familiar with. So here we go. Questions for Coach? Dave, right here the front right. What did it mean to, to you to get your, this Brooklyn team to the tournament in your first season? You know what, it feels great. And uh, one of the reasons is – is the, the kids uh, on the team have really um, been open to my coaching style, our, our kind of atmosphere and family atmosphere that I brought from, um, you know, my coaching career and kind of how I do things. And to see them buy into a, a situation of a new, a new coach, a first-year coach, and for them to come every day with great attitude, high character, work really hard, um, to see good things happen when you put it that time and effort in, um, I think is a testament to, to the kids on the team. So I'm really happy for them. I'm happy for, happy for my family. and. Um, wife and son who've been through a lot over the last year and to um, kind of have some success here has been been good for us. Yeah, back right. What was the biggest piece of adversity your team faced this year and how did you overcome it? Well, losses, of course. <laughs> um, you know, I would just say the biggest thing was to stay committed to the process when things weren't perfect. Um, you know, we've had some bumps along the way of some losses that I thought we could have won and didn't close out a few games there. And I thought the biggest thing was to try to stay positive with this group. Um, we, we really came in every day, worked really hard, had a good time doing it. We pushed forward when adversity hit. And at, at some time about three to four weeks ago, our guys made a one more step up level of commitment to defense and rebounding the ball. And I thought when we did that, we were able to uh, become a better basketball team and gave ourselves a chance in a very tough uh, – Northeast Conference to uh, have a chance to come out and get a W. Jabo. You mentioned being familiar with this arena. What was your reaction when you saw you were going to be playing here? Well, I'll tell you what, great. I mean, I'm ecstatic to uh, obviously be playing anywhere. And the place looks fantastic. Um, all the renovations they've done, the, the way it looks for the NCAA tournament looks great. And, um, you know, I've had some, I'd say, okay memories here. <laughs> and this is such a tough place to, uh, you know, come in and play. But we're, we're excited. We're happy to be in the tournament. Uh, we were very happy to be coming to Dayton to play, and I think our guys are, uh, are ready to come out and uh, hopefully play well tomorrow night. Back right. How do you think you guys will be most successful tomorrow night? You know, we like to um, obviously push tempo and, and get a fast-paced game where I think our athleticism and our individual talents, per se, can, can, ha can be effective. So the way to do that is to defend, play good defense, rebound the basketball, and try to you know run really fast and push tempo. Um, Radford's done a very nice job, uh, number one, of winning their tournament. They've made big play after big play um, to come away and, and meet us here. So I think it's two uh, teams that are both on a mission, um, two pretty evenly matched teams that um, it should be a fun game tomorrow night. I'm, I'm excited to coach here, and um, I'm excited for our guys to have this opportunity to be here to play and um, showcase their talents on national television. Any further questions for Coach Kellogg? All right, Derek, thank you for your time. Thank you, guys. Good luck tomorrow night. Nice to meet you. Thanks. You too. Appreciate it. Right. And next scheduled start of a press conference is at 5.05. We will be joined by some student athletes from Radford at 5.05. Hi, Jeff Gilbert uh, here for the Roanoke Times today. Um, but, Carly, I, you've played here before <laughs> yes. in this arena. Because um, I, I live around here and work around here too, so saw you play in district final here. So what's kind of your, your memories of that and getting to come back here and play? How? I've played here about three times. Um, I know my sophomore and junior year I lost here. Um, my senior year I, I finally had got a win here, so it was. It's good. I, I really am happy to be back. Just, I'm glad to be back here and playing in, at home and in. This atmosphere, and I kind of really got a bad taste in my mouth going one and two here. So I would love to be back here and get a, a big win. A lot of family going to be here. 
Yes, a lot of family, friends. Uh, how, how important is that to you? How much fun? That's an extra thing for you than some of the other guys on the team. So how much fun is that for you? Talk about that. Um, it's, it's real big. Um, I've, I've had games or some of the home games out there in Radford. Um, it's about six hours from uh, Cincinnati. So being here in Dayton, about maybe 35 to 45 minutes from my home, is um, helpful to my friends and family so they'll be able to, to come see, finally see me play. Um, also, Ed, I was thinking about what do you know about LIU, who you're playing, and anything that you think is really important for you guys in this game tomorrow? Uh, you know, we haven't really, they're not in the conference, so we haven't really seen them too much or seen them in non-conference games. So, but we do know they're, they're good at transition. So we know we have the, our transition defense has to be top notch and we're going to work on that. Is there a team that you've played this year that when you look at the scouting reporter, coaches have said, this is kind of like somebody that you played in your league this year? Uh, I mean, a lot of teams have been good on this one, trans transition offense. So, you know, teams like uh, Winthrop and fast-paced teams on transition. So, like Virginia Tech that we play so far. So, you know, we have to be on that. Um, what about offensively, Carlick? What has to happen for you guys in this game that you think is really important? Um, we uh, our coaches talk tempo every tempo and pace every every day in practice. So I feel like if we we move the ball and we move with pace, uh, we'll be able to get what we want. You ready, Al? Back right. Jim Fox, Associated Press. Carl, that was uh, some shot to finish your conference tournament. There, can you walk us through the final seconds in that shot? Yes, um, we were supposed to do a, a double drag. Uh, I got the ball around 10 seconds. Uh, I dribbled over, and uh, we had our we were supposed to have our four and our five men at the top of the key setting a uh, double screen. Uh, I, I was sitting there just dribbling, and I'm screaming at one of our our four men to come up so he can get in the right spot to set the screen. But I also also kept my eye on the the time and I see it going down, so I just had to go. And as I was going, he eventually came up, set a, set the screen, and uh, I actually think that that was better that he came later. Um, I seen the clock go three two, and then I had to go from there, and it was a big shot. Any further questions for our student athletes? All right, Carly, good night. Thank you for your time. Good luck tomorrow night against LIU Brooklyn. Thank you. Uh, next scheduled start of a press conference will be at 525. We will be joined by the head coach of the Radford Highlanders, Mike Jones, at 525.
Hart, we're now being joined by the head coach of the Radford Highlanders, Mike Jones. Uh, Mike, if you'd like, you can make an opening statement, and then we'll uh, open the floor for questions. Well, uh, very excited to be here uh, with the with our team. You know, we have a. Um, I know a lot of coaches say this, but we have a terrific group of young men who I have loved coaching uh, this year. It all it hasn't always been uh, uh, peaches and cream, but uh, man, I tell you what, they they got closer and more connected as the year went on. Uh, we went through a lot of adversity, and uh, just really happy that these guys uh, became champions. Something that will link them for the rest of their lives, and now they, you know, the cherry on top is getting to play in the NCAA tournament. So uh, we're very excited to be here, and I appreciate all of you. All all uh, being here as well for us. Questions for Coach Jones. <clears throat> They're right here, front right. Hey, Coach, um, Jeff Gilbert with the uh, Roanoke Times today. Um, talked to a couple guys, and they were like camaraderie, teamwork, coming together. Uh, some of them have been involved two or three years, and you just re referenced it. Could you talk a little more about why this team is close and why you think they have gotten so close and how important that is to your success? Well, first of all, we have a bunch of characters, man. They're, they're, uh, they got a lot of personality. Um, uh, we, we knew that, uh, you know, we had some guys that, you know, had some give and take. You know, they weren't just robots. Uh, and we've allowed them to have that freedom, you know, to express themselves and to be individuals. And, you know, it's just really, it's flourished, you know, um, with, with all of them and with our team. So it's just, we, we have a ball. We ask, absolutely have a ball. And that was one thing that, you know, working with Shaka at VCU, um, we had fun, you know, our our coaches had fun together, our players had fun together, and players and coaches had fun. And this group kind of struck me as the same type of group that could handle that. And, you know, when it's time to get serious, we get serious. But when it's time to have fun, we have a ball. And, you know, this stuff is hard. So, you know, you might as well have fun while you're doing it. And this team has embraced that. And they've, they've really done a good job of being able to separate uh, the two, the having fun, and then the get down to business and, and be focused. Another one? Yeah, front right. Um, your opponent, what can you, a couple guys said they, you know, they talk about the transition, remind them a little bit of uh, Virginia Tech, Winthrop, teams like that. I know you've, it's a crash course and try to figure out a team and get ready for it. What, what do you think of them? What do you feel like is most important for you guys to do? Well, first of all, uh, their coach is a very good coach, Derek Kellogg, spent a lot of years at uh, <clears throat> UMass, uh, played for John Calipari at, at UMass, was a great player. Um, and he, you know, he has a style that's similar in terms of the dribble drive offense. They they really get to the foul line a lot. Uh, they have some athletic players, some dynamic scores. Uh, they like to, you know, push that ball in transition. They've got one of the fastest paces in the country. So um, those are challenges for our team at different points in the year. We've been susceptible to that, and we've gotten better as the year has gone on. But we have to be uh, really good at it uh, tomorrow against an LIU uh, team. Yeah, back left. Uh, Kate Naraki, University of Dayton. Um, how could you describe the past 24 hours and how you have felt from finding out you're in the tournament up until now? Uh, it's been a whirlwind. It's been fun. Uh, we uh, had the plan uh, that uh, we were going to leave uh, Sunday night if we uh, were um, selected to play in Dayton. And uh, so the show, I think the show used to be at 7. Now it's at six, which gives us an extra hour to pack. <laughs> so uh, we, you know, we all, uh, you know, finished all of our uh, obligations uh, with the media and got a chance to pack and get on the bus. And, you know, the first two hours, maybe, a, or hour and a half, the guys were raucous in the back and then it was dead silent back there. So, uh, um, but it was good to get out of away from campus, uh, just get back to our circle. You know, our circle has been everything to us. And, um, you know, to get here and, uh, you know, get a uh, get to bed and, and be here in Dayton and start to feel, you know, the uh, sense of the tournament and get all of that hype out of the way and now really focus on the job at hand has been uh, really good. Right here on the right. 
Hi, Mitch Stacy with Associated Press. Uh, at 16 seed, how do you gear up for this game and like not think, oh my gosh, if we win, we're going to be somewhere else on Thursday? I mean, how do you focus on the opponent at hand? Is it is it hard or not? Um, not for me. Uh, I'm not sure right now if it's hard for the guys. We'll find out here in a minute when we go into practice. Um, but uh, you know, when I was at VCU, we played here, and then we flew to Chicago, and then you know, 48 hours later, we were playing Georgetown, and in 48 hours, we were playing Purdue. Uh, so having gone through it for me, it doesn't feel any different. But we also do things in the non-conference, like go to exempt tournaments. And you know, this year we went to, uh, I think we played at Nevada first, and then we went to San Francisco, and then we flew to Vegas. And then you know, 48 hours later, we had a game against A&T, who we didn't know. Uh, and then 24 hours later, we had a game against uh, UC Davis, who we didn't know. So they have some familiarity with uh, you know, this whole rushed process and you know, getting up and moving. So I think they'll be fine. Front right. Yeah, one other question. Uh, talked to Carlick earlier about uh, being back home. Uh, he he said, "I'm one and two in this building." <laughs> 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 we got to uh, even that. <laughs> yeah, he wants to even that up. Um, it's kind of a neat thing for a guy like that to be able to come back here and experience that. Just comment on that. Yeah, I mean, he uh, he really had a tough tough year last year um, when he found out that he wasn't going to be able to play. It was tough on his family. Uh, it was, I mean, these guys, they, their identity is so closely tied in with basketball. And for that to be taken away from a young man is, is very difficult, uh, especially a young man who's five or six hours away from home. And so uh, we tried, you know, really hard to, you know, pull him into the fold uh, to keep his spirits up. But, you know, he had some, some tough days last year. Um, and so now, I mean, for him to have the success that he's had this year and to be able to, at the end of the day, come home and play in front of his family and friends in the NCAA tournament is uh, just, you know, it's a blessing for him. You know, it's a blessing. Um, and I'm really happy for him because he's a, he's a good, he's a great kid. Here on the right. Nick Herber, University of Dayton. What was the most important aspect of coaching you learned under Coach Smart, and how have you been able to apply it to your players at Radford? Uh, great question. Um, you know, Shock is like 10 or 12 years younger than me, so, you know, good thing I've, I'm a, I've always been a person who believe I can learn from anyone in any situation, and, you know, it was just so refreshing to work for him because he believes in relationships, you know, very strongly. And he believes in spending time with the players, whether it's, you know, I remember one time we had a kid from California as a freshman and he played the piano and I, you know, we arranged with the music department for him to get a piano for about half an hour. And I went in there with just me and him, listened to him play the piano and it, it just made a connection. And uh, he's very big on, you know, having those relationships because once you have the relationships now, you can, you can get to the meat of coaching. You can, you know, they'll, they'll be more willing to listen if they know you care about them. And uh, so that's the one thing that, you know, I, obviously I knew about that as a coach, but it just became more crystal clear uh, working with him because it was so important to him. And, and we were able to see how, you know, the relationships uh, helped us go from, uh, you know, an okay team to a Final Four team at a school that, you know, no one thought could, could make that happen. So, and I believe that that's the number one reason why it was able to happen. Any further questions for Coach? All right. Mike, thank you for your time. Good luck tomorrow night. Again. Thank you all, and God bless. <clears throat> thank you, Mike. Good to meet you. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Uh, next scheduled start of a press conference is at – 550. That's when we will be joined by some student athletes from St. Bonaventure at 550.